Hello and welcome back to another video. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the most recent DLC fighters or Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Banjo and Kazooie. Um, I haven't talked about Joker or Hero because I didn't really care about either of them. Um, I never really played Persona and I've played a bit of Dragon Quest Builders, I still need to beat that. Um, so I didn't really care about either of those two characters. But Banjo and Kazooie, the original game was my childhood. Never got the uh, second game because, um, well, I just didn't have the money back then. And they, and uh, yeah, getting Banjo Tooie on the N64 is way too expensive. Uh, but I have, I did um, go back on my Xbox One and 100% uh, them up, percent both of them because I have um, Rare Replay, and that's literally the only reason why I have an Xbox One is for Rare Replay. And that was mostly just because I wanted Banjo and Kazooie and Banjo Tooie, and I wanted to play Conker's Bad Fear Day. So yeah, the Banjo and Kazooie are literally the only reason why I kept my Nintendo, uh, not Nintendo, my um, my um, Xbox One. Uh, if uh, if I didn't have replay, Rare Replay, I would have sent it back and probably got, I don't know, more Nintendo Switch games or um, a Wii U or um, PS4. Um, I can't remember exactly what year I got my Xbox One, so I don't know if the Switch was even out then. I don't think it was. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't out back then. And I even remember that year asking my mom for a Wii U. It's like, nah, that's too expensive. Gets me an Xbox One, which is even more expensive. It's like, how do you logic? Uh, it, and the worst part is, all of that, uh, uh, like, all the ones like, going up to it, I knew mom would probably go into a shop and then um, a guy would... Uh, trying to offload uh, um, Xbox Ones would just be like, oh yeah, this is the this is the thing that all the kids want, and I w I was constantly say saying in the months leading up to it, it up to Christmas, is saying how bad the Xbox One was um, due to its lack of games and um, just a, just being underpowered. Like seriously, I I kept. I kept on saying that, but uh, evidently she didn't listen to me. Uh, but I did go, uh, yeah, I I have gone back and 100% uh, to both Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. And uh, I beat um, Nuts and Bolts um, when I was younger. And um, I think I already told you guys all about that in a previous video. Um, uh, but yeah, and I've beat, and I've recently gone back, beaten it again, then 100%ed it. Um, Mind you, I've actually beaten that game several times, uh, to be fair. Anyway, um, so, yeah, I, I, I do love the Banjo-Kazooie franchise a lot. I haven't played um, Grunty's uh, Revenge or banjo Pilot, but banjo Pilot isn't really a Banjo-Kazooie game because it was supposed to be Diddy Kong Racing. But hey ho, I'm, I'll probably go back and I'll probably like play Grunty's Revenge if I ever find it on the uh, GBA on, on GBA. Um, but yeah, um, so that's why I'm doing this because I actually really love Banjo and Kazooie. Um, so how do I? Uh, what do I think about Banjo and Kazooie in Smash Bros Ultimate? I actually quite like um, them. They're not. They're just in the right area where they're not too strong and not too weak. So it's just like. Um, well, uh, if you remember, like back during the Wii, 3DS and Wii U days, um, and and we, when Bayo came out, everybody was complaining. Oh, Bayo's too OP. Hashtag nerf Bayonetta, and ev and the, the, you couldn't use Bayonetta without being accused of tier picking because she was. Um, regarded as the best character in the game, um, and it, uh, um, so yeah, if you just wanted to use Bayonetta because you loved her from her games and you just want and you just like the character, you just couldn't because you'd be called you'd uh, get called a tier picker, and it just made her not fun to play, um, and uh, you don't have that problem with Banjo and Kazooie. Because they're not game-breakingly OP um, like Bayo was in the Smash 4, um, uh, but they are—they aren't so weak that they're literally useless. Uh, 
like how Pichu was in melee and it, um, uh, or uh, like Ganondorf, they're not as they're not as useful useless as those two characters. Um, or Little Mac um, on the Wii U after the Wii U version came out and after we got nerfed massively uh, again and again and again. Or um, uh, who else? Is anyway, uh, I'm not going to go listen to all the bad characters. Um, so you can use them, and they are the most fun characters um, I have ever played in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Um, and I have a, I have had a lot of fun just playing with these two. Um, I haven't gone online yet. I'll probably like um, do a live stream just like me going online with them for the first time. Um, but I I've just like been going up against level nine AIs and just like practicing, getting used to um, their controls, how they fight, and the damn what moves to use to counter what. Um, and uh, yeah, it is a lot of fun. Um, I uh, uh, I and the music. I've I haven't listened to all of the music um, in it. Um, but oh, excuse me. But I have listened to a bit of the music, and uh, um, I think I listened to like Spiral Mountain, the intro, and Gobi's Valley um, in their entirety. Um, and I absolutely love them. Uh, they are really good remixes. And the um, me and the uh, Max will be doing a video going through all the different um, musics. You know, all the different songs that um, at where I did for in this update. So yes, we'll also be going through the remake of Megalovania. So it'll probably be titled like um, uh, our thoughts on. Um, Banjo and Kazooie and Mega uh, Banjo Kazooie music and Megalovania in Smash Bros Ultimate or something like that. Um, and uh, now let's talk about their moves. Now I love um, Regal Bash. It is um, legitimately one of the most useful slower moves. Like um, it's, it is. A uh, I don't think it's as powerful, but it, it is. Com uh, it's not as powerful, but I do believe it is comparable to something like Falcon Punch and from Captain Falcon and the Ganondorf Warlock Punch. Um, uh, my only problem with it is that I do wish it would come out a little bit faster, just a little bit, just the tiniest bit faster. Uh, it's just a tad bit too slow. Um, and um, I can't remember the name for this move. Uh, I don't know if you'll see me using it there because I, I might have to speed this footage up. Um, but um, shooting the eggs. I uh, can't remember what it's called, but um, that move. I now understand why they had to make it so that it uh, um, loses power the more you use it. Because if it didn't, it would just be the most silly move. It would have been hilarious, and that, um, and yeah, I, I do wish it had a bit more range, just so it could just so it could be a counter for PK fire. Um, if it had a bit more range, then oh, I would be so happy because Ness, oh Ness mains would rue the day they crossed my banjo and Kazooie. Um, uh, but yeah, um. Talking about uh, Ness and Range characters, um, uh, Wonder Wing, uh, five uses, um, each stock. It does the gold feathers don't replenish, replenish, and it, um, it comes out decently fast. Again, a little bit faster would have been nice, um, but uh, I can live with how uh, with its current speed, and it, um. It is quite a heavy hit hitter. Like I would say, this I don't know exactly if it's as powerful as again Wall uh, Ganondorf's Wall of Punch or Falcon Punch, but it feels like it is. Um, uh, maybe and if not, maybe just a tiniest bit less powerful. Um, and it is quite good. 
Um, the only changes I would make, like I said, make it a tiny bit faster. And make it so the feathers replenish after a little while. Because what I tend to tend to end up doing with them is um, just hanging on to them for the entire uh, game. And then when I get to get to around 90 to 100% damage, I just tend to spam spam them. Because at that point you've got nothing to lose spamming them. Because um, you're probably going to be uh, uh, lose a stock soon anyway. So um, you might as well get them out as, uh, you know, as... Well, you know, while you still can, um, and they do have a a, he a beefy knockback, um, which I do quite like, um, and it, uh, uh, well, well, swirl the moves. Um, final smash, the Jinjo and Nator. Well, um, I have no idea where the Jinjo and Nator statue comes from. Um, I, you, I, know, I know it's like the thing you use to beat Gunty, um in the final battle, but I, I have no idea, like, physically in the game, like, how it's supposed to be, like, popping out there, but, um, that's not really a big complaint, and it is probably the best, um, thing they could have done for a final smash, being as the Jinjo in a tour is the second most powerful character in the uh, the Banjo Kazooie universe, only behind Log himself, and that's only because Log has reality warping powers. Um. So, yeah. Um. So yeah, it makes it makes sense for him to be um, the final smash, and it, it is like sort of. Um, the most memorable part of the first game. I really don't think there'd be anything, any anything else I would have the final smash be. Um, like maybe just like um, uh, Banjo and Kazooie going ham, like shooting all of the different eggs from the game. So like you get the grenade, shooting out the grenade eggs, um, and fire eggs, and uh, uh, clockwork Kazooies. You know, just to basically have just like a montage of them go shooting all the different types of eggs. Um, yeah, that's the only th other thing I could really say I'd have their, um, have their final, s other thing I'd have their final smash be. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the up B, I can't, uh, the jump pad. Um, <coughs> that is one of the best recovery moves I have ever seen, especially paired with Wonder Wing. And that's why I mainly use Wonder Wing 4 is for to get to have the safest recovery in the entire game. Also, I use it here on the Shulk just to stall out his final smash. If you like, if you can time it right with them getting up um, and you press inside me, you can just smack them back and back and back and just like wait out their final smash meter. That is just like one of the. Um, Funniest things I've I've um, see done with these two in this game. It's like nope, nope, denied. It's like I call that the cock blocking technique. Um, but yeah, um, it uh, and I do like how just like uh, Sonic Spring, the uh, jump pad does uh, can damage at your opponents, which um, which is uh, which is nice. Um, you can uh, you can probably you'll probably see it in some like um, Banjo Kazooie combo videos where someone's off screen and then they just land a bounce pad on their head um, or something. You, yeah, you could probably come up with like some some really clever combos with that. Um, well, uh, oh, excuse me. Um, I think I've gone through everything. Oh yeah. Um, he, uh, Banjo does a roll, um, which is, uh, um, very reminiscent, well, no, it is just directly pulled from Banjo and Kazooie, uh, the first game, where, he, you know, uh, one of, his, uh, one of the first attacks you get is a claw swipe, which you also see in this, and, um, a forward roll, roll, um, uh, Talent Trot, I think that was a really clever way of, in, uh, adding Talent Trot as a, um, Dash. 
So I would have liked it to be a move, but I don't really think know what move they get rid of. Um, and I think Talent Troy should have been a bit faster. Like, um, oh yeah, that's something else. If you are having trouble with um, just Banjo and Kazooie online or with your friends or wherever, um, something I have found with Banjo and Kazooie is that at least. Um, in my experience, they have trouble with um, smaller, faster characters. So, um, characters I would suggest um, using against a Banjo and Kazooie person would be like um, Kirby, maybe Yoshi. Yoshi has decent speed, but he's not that small. Pikachu and Pichu, Ness and Lucas. Um, uh, I don't know about Jigglypuff. Young Link and Toon Link. Pit and Dark Pit. Uh, Mr. Game & Watch, obviously you saw earlier the level 9 Mr. Game & Watch. They was just brutal off stage. It was just like, nope, you're not coming back onto the stage. And it was like, really. Uh, Meta Knight um, put up a good fight. Um, maybe Wario, I, I haven't really gone up against Wario. Uh, Diddy Kong haven't gone up against, uh, Olimar might be good, well, no, Olimar isn't good because Wonderwing literally kills all of his Pikmin. Um, so yeah, no, don't use Olimar against, um, Banjo and Kazooie. Um, Villager and Isabel, they have the speed and yeah, they, they can, uh, they are quite annoying to deal with as Banjo and Kazooie. Haven't gone up against Mega Man, Little Mac, Within theory, he is quite fast, so I do think he could outpace Banjo and Kazooie. Angry Ninja, I faced a, a level 9 Angry, Nin a Angry Ninja once, it is a pain in the bum. Pac Man, as you saw earlier, post you could maybe, but I don't think he has enough power behind him. I haven't gone up any against any, any of Bowser Jr. or the Koopalings. Um, haven't really gone up against Duck Hunt, haven't gone up against Kennel Ryu, Plow, well I don't think they'd have any chance, um, Bayonet, no, Inkling might stand a cha good chance, um, and Simon and Richter just spam projectiles with them and you probably win, uh, Plant maybe, and that's all of them. Those small characters, yeah, those are the characters I would say probably have the best chance of um, giving you the win uh, against Banjo and Kazooie because they do just struggle with small and fast characters. Um, well, again, in my experience, I've struggled against with small and fast characters. Um, and um, something you might actually notice, which isn't um, which isn't a flaw with the character, but because I mained Little Mac for so long for like um, the latter half of Smash Four. And at um, the beginning of, well, it pretty much up until now, of Smash Ultimate with uh, me from time to time changing out to like Ice Climbers or Pokemon Trainer. Um, uh, I've, you, I've just grown too dependent on the C stick because of my time with Little Mac. Um, yeah. Um, so I do think Banjo and Kazooie are the best balance of not too strong but not too weak. Um, and the way they are really hitting is in their speed. They're just they're just slow enough so that they can keep up with most of the characters, but there are some smaller characters um, that they struggle to keep up with. And uh, I wouldn't suggest uh, um, taking them into a fight against um, a small, a small fast character, or fast characters. Period. Also, how did Dark Pit survive there? Um, anyway, yeah, I think that's everything. I think I've covered everything. Oh no, the um, alternate costumes. Um, now, again, I do. I have 100%ed all of the Banjo Kazooie games, but I do not have. Or everything memorized, so I might not get a lot of these references. So, um, there's a default one, obviously. There's a pink one and pink banjo, and the damn um, like, uh, I think Kazooie's wing. Yeah, Kazooie just gets brighter in color. 
I think that could be a reference to maybe two, no, maybe, probably not two tears, so I don't know. I don't know what that could be a reference to. I think somebody already covered that. There was a black banjo and blue and purple kazooie. Black banjo makes me think of like a black bear, because it, uh, banjo normally is a brown bear, so that it could be going from a brown bear to a black bear. Um, and I don't really, I can't really think of any blue or purple characters off the top of my head that Kazooie could be referencing. And yellow backpack, um, I don't know. Um, and then there's a lighter brown with dark purple and light pink Kazooie yellow backpack again. I don't know. That I don't know if that's a reference to anything, but then we have White Banjo with black and white Kazooie, definitely a reference to Boggy. Um then we have yellow banjo and sort of like a bronze and goldish maybe Kazooie with a green backpack. Uh could be a reference to Jiggies on and notes. And Jiggies or notes, the collectibles in the main games. Um, a blue banjo with a pink kazooie. That could be a reference to Hail Fire Peak, and I could just be seeing um, pink, uh, pink, a uh, red kazooie as a pink kazooie. And uh, that might, that could be red with pink. Um, yeah, that could be a reference to Hail Fire Peak, where on one side it was fire, and on the other side it was ice, and then you had to fight, and the two, you had two bosses. Um, two dragons, a fire dragon and an ice dragon. Um, and then we have my favourite of them. Black and purple banjo with a purple... Uh, not, no, no, sorry. Black and green banjo with dark purple and even even darker purple kazooie with, with a green beak as well. And that is quite clearly a reference to Gruntilda. Um... Which, yeah, is uh, one of my favourite alternates here, and yes, I, I, you saw me there, I, I wasn't picking get ca any characters, it just randomised into Dark Pit, then Pit. What were the odds of that? Anyway, um, out of my, the, well, uh, out of the alternates, um, the, uh, um, Grunty one is definitely my favourite, but I still prefer the original, um, look of Banjo and Kazooie. Oh, talking about um, the, the looks, um, the design for the new game. So yeah, uh, well not the well not the new game. The new the new well somewhat new design. It is sort of a mixture of the original design from Banjo and Kazooie and the beta design from the beta of Banjo and Kazooie, um, which kind of makes sense because. Um, they had to change a few things around. I can't remember exactly what it was. I think like um, the eyes were bigger. Um, so just so, uh, and that was basically because of the limitations of the Nintendo 64. Um, so I think because we don't have those limitations now, um, the fact that they can use m more pieces of their beta design uh, is a good idea. Um, and let me just say. Pit's final smash is broken. Like, it is the hardest final smash to dodge. Um, especially if you're going up against a level 9 AI. Like, I, I can't really dodge it. Like, uh, if I used Wondering, I could have probably dodged it, but I wouldn't want to... You know. Anyway. Um, so I do like the design. It just um, feels a bit odd finally getting to see... Banjo and Kazooie in Smash Bros. finally after all this time. And it's even more surreal seeing Sans in Smash Bros. It's like a big old fever dream um, seeing Banjo and Kazooie fighting Sans in Smash Bros. It's just like, what the... We are truly in the strangest timeline. Um, also, I have to make one quick little complaint. The Jiggy that represents the Banjo Kazooie series is wrong. It's um, got the um, bits that slot to, that you slot another Jiggy into at the bottom and right, and the bits that you slot to that Jiggy 
into another jiggy at the le left and top when it's supposed to be um, the hollow bits in the left and bottom and the, the, the sticky outy bits in the top and right. So, yeah, that, that's, that's just a small complaint. It's not really something you're going to really notice unless you're a diehard fan of the series. I wouldn't really even call myself diehard. I would call myself... A lover of the series, but I don't, you know, spend my life uh, remembering every little detail and, um, you know, game uh, and spending hours and hours uh, trying to um, get a better time on um, the uh, leaderboards on the um, on in Banjo Tooie against the boss battles. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out uh, quickly. Anyway. Uh, I hope you uh, guys enjoyed uh, this video, um, and that uh, if there's another character that comes in the future that I like as much as Banjo and Kazooie, I'll definitely do another one of these. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.